Hey everybody. Does y'all seem, let me ask you something. Does y'all seem uh, ever keep you up at night? Because I have got crap sleep for the past like three nights. Lying awake. Disturbed. I'm losing it. I'm losing my mind. How can this happen? Anyway. I might be a little, I might be a little wacky after what I've seen this weekend. But uh, anyway, <sighs> is there any positives? I can't believe I'm doing this video. I really can't. I'm one of those tech fans that is um, defeated, broke down, um, pretty much has no hope left for the program. But, you know what? I've been on the Facebook groups. I've been on YouTube. Somehow, there's still tech fans that um, have hope. Good for them. I mean... Uh, <laughs> uh, there's some tech fans that are saying, well, this two-point conversion at the end of the game, the, that won him the game, uh, he bobbled the pass. That wasn't really a pass. Well, in my opinion, the game shouldn't have been close in the first place where... Um, where a bobbled pass or something, a two-point conversion is the deciding factor in the game. And we didn't deserve to win that game if we were in that situation in the first place. And we went ahead and lost, and it, it was just awful. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> what am I doing here? I don't even know. But I thought I'd make this video. And funny enough, I came up with the idea for this video after re-watching the game, um, I, you know, didn't want to because of just, because of the pain that the video had caused, or, or that watching, um, such a thing would cause me again, but, um, you know, I kind of got over it. Um, I watched the game to kind of see what went wrong, and clearly the blame falls on the coaching staff. Um, Jeff Sims. Well, first of all, the defense lets them scream out to a 14-point lead. Um, that's going to pretty much uh, demoralize us, especially when we had a hard time getting together on offense. But Sims missed some key passes uh, in the first quarter that, and early second quarter that um, could have uh, put us out ahead. You know, we would have been the jackets that I had been thinking all year if he had just completed those passes. It was like three or four passes um, that could have led to continuing drives or touchdowns. Like, like if Jeff Sims had just fixed his passing game, we would have um, won the game, honestly. A lot of the blame can fall on Jeff Sims. But can fall on Jeff Sims not completing his passes. But at the end of the day... Whose job is it to develop the quarterback and over the offseason, you know, and, and improve him from year one to year two because he's clearly not improved? Um, at the end of the day, it's the coaches. And from what I heard, Jeff Sims has been putting in the work in the offseason and spending time with a lot of our uh, – with our coordinator. And our coordinator is clearly awful. Uh, Dave Patnode, I mean – Whatever you say about Collins, I mean, I personally think he's not the guy. Pat Node, our offensive coordinator, is clearly not the guy. Uh, I don't think he should have been allowed into the locker room. Um, Backer is at, on thin ice at best. I mean, he gave up 22 to freaking Northern Illinois. Uh, what, is the, what, what is the excuse for the defense being this bad year three? Last time I checked, transitioning from the triple option doesn't have anything to do with defense, but I don't know. Um, they inherited a pretty good defense and it just can't, just can't get it together. The team looked asleep. Maybe, maybe here will be my first positive, um, pondering thought of the day. Um, and I feel like I need to put a disclaimer. Uh, I still think we suck. I still think we're going to have an awful year. Um, why am I doing this? Why am I trying to find positives in this awful, awful game? Well, I don't know, because I'm an idiot homer, because I've invested this much, might as well keep going. I might be sitting here rambling, but first positive, um, maybe we were just not, maybe we were just not motivated, I don't know, 
it, it's clearly the coach's fault for not getting the play, being able to get the players motivated for our first, you know, home game of the year, home game and a wideout. Like, I mean, I mean, if you go back and watch me in the stream, I was excited. I was excited to be finally watching Yellow Jacket football. Um, I was excited, even if it was Northern Illinois. I'm talking about this at the beginning of the game. I was excited just to be, just to have football back and watch my Jackets play. And I feel like I have more freaking energy than the football team did. And it's on the coaches to get the players. Uh, they're talking about some big culture change. And their players can't even get hyped up for the first freaking game of the year and lose at home. We looked half asleep, especially on, I mean, um, defense. On offense, we just looked awful, which <laughs> I'm trying to come up with positives for this, and I'm pretty much rambling. You you, you know, you don't have to watch this or, or whatever. But this is for the Tech fans that are holding on to hope. Um, let's see. Uh, I think some positives might be some of the players. Um, uh, defense, I really have nothing much to say. That number 25, Thomas, not Wanye Thomas. Well, Wanye looked all right, at least in the beginning of the game. Um, some people were pissed at Wanye. Um, he, he looked pretty good at the beginning of the game. Maybe, you know, kind of fell off towards the end, but he seemed to be flying around at the beginning, making tackles and stuff. Um, I, I, I don't really have too much of a problem with Wanye. But this new Thomas, I'm not sure his first name, but um, number 25 linebacker, he seemed pretty good um, and promising. And then uh, Quest Jackson, of course, um, was pretty good, um, uh, you, you know, per usual. Uh, as far as the defense goes, that's about it. The defensive line, I mean, terrible. We were missing Keon White. Here's a positive or a possible something that means that our team might not suck uh or as bad as i you know am projecting us to um keon white transfer from old dominion which haha <laughs> it's old dominion they suck they're terrible well old dominion is uh pretty good on defense and we snagged a defensive lineman from old dominion keon white dude's a dude's a beast i've talked about him a little bit before um he's out for the first two games uh <laughs> which i thought wouldn't matter Mm. Silly me. Silly me. Thought it wouldn't matter, but Keon White um, is, a, is is out for the first two games, so he'll definitely be a big-time help on that defensive line, which which needs it. Oh, don't even get me started on the offensive line. Uh, maybe honest, I, I don't think there's any hope for the offensive line. Um, I don't know what the hell they put on, on the field, but whatever quarterback we had in there was running for their lives um, the entire game. So you want to find positives for me uh, as far as the offensive line? Not going to happen. I have no faith in the offensive line whatsoever. And that's a killer. That's a killer. Uh, we needed to have an improved offensive line this year. All signs were pointing. You know, we had these transfers in. We have one of the best O-line coaches in the country. <laughs> I mean, I've lost, I mean, it's such a huge blow. I, I thought Brent Key, you know, I, I was saying this over the off season, like I trust our position coaches more than our coordinator. Now I'm having a hard time even trusting our position coach. Like Brent Key uh, was my guy. I thought could take the helm as head coach or at least offensive coordinator from Jeff Collins. And the product he put on the field, the, the, the offensive line, was abysmal. I can't believe what I freaking saw uh, of the of how bad the offensive line was. Our quarterbacks were having to run for their lives. Jameer Gibbs, you know, is still having to put in way too much effort. If you just block for Jameer, he will make it he will make great things happen. He will uh freaking bust through the line. And go crazy and go for a bunch of yards. All you got to do is block for them. And and we can't... Oh, my God. If we can't defend against the Northern Illinois Huskies, who can we defend against? This was our easiest game of the year. I'm going to throw another um, possible positive at you. Or maybe... I wouldn't even call it a positive. Northern Illinois... 
Now, going back, I don't know if it was us making them look good, but they looked like they didn't look like a bad team. They didn't look like, I mean, they were completing passes, they were running, they were um, flying around on defense. They clearly outcoached us and outplayed us. They wanted to win more, and they did. Um, they just didn't seem like a bad team. And, I mean, the only possible way to cheer me up would be if Northern Illinois, you know, goes and wins the MAC, wins out, beats freaking Michigan, wins the MAC, and, you know, we win a bunch of games too. That would be the only thing that made me feel slightly better. Um, but it doesn't matter. We should be able to beat the best team in the MAC, right? Shouldn't we? But guess what? We should be able to beat the best team in the MAC. But Northern Illinois is not that. I, I, I'm, I'm talking on the assumption here that they're good, but they're probably not. We, we, we can't. You know, we should be able to beat the best team in the MAC. We can't even beat the worst team in the MAC. I've been rambling for like 11 minutes now. I don't know if anybody watched this. But, I mean, I'm trying to be positive. <laughs> this video is supposed to be positive. I'm just bitching. Well, there's very few positives. Um, I could talk about uh, probably the biggest positive. Well, Jameer Gibbs did his thing. You know, he worked with what he had. Like I said, the offensive line was bad. You know, he made what he could work and still look good still looks very very talented i'm afraid he'll transfer out i'm afraid that he'll uh figure out how crappy our coaching staff is they're gonna squander his career and he transfers to a better team and i wouldn't blame him at all it would break my heart i wouldn't blame him at all and are their best players too i mean who wants to stay here with a crappy coaching staff uh that'll just waste their career all right Moving on to another positive, if I can. <laughs> if I can, sorry. I, I mean, I'm trying to cheer the tech fans up here. I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I'm wasting my time doing that for, but. Um, Jordan Yates. Jordan Yates absolutely balled out this game. You know, he didn't look like some kind of world beater, um, but he looked like, he looked like Jeff Sims, if Jeff Sims could throw. It, it was the weirdest thing. Um, I mean, he was, you know, he could roll out of the pocket and make a pass. And he looked, you know, confident. Last year, Jordan Yates came in and didn't, and looked like a deer in the headlights. He looked like he didn't know what he was doing. And he come out this year and, man, I, I mean, blew me away. He, he can also, surprisingly, scramble. Like I said, he looks like Jeff Sims. And Jeff Sims, when he was in, his scramble game, on point. It, but Jeff Sims is basically a running back. He couldn't throw. Uh, it gets hurt. Jordan Yates comes in, man, and is passing all over the place and doing pretty a pretty good job. <laughs> Some people have been saying this. I don't blame them for saying it. If Jordan Yates had been in the whole game, uh, we would have won. Because, like I said earlier, Jeff Sims missed some key passes in the beginning that could have really changed, like some wide open passes that could have um, you know, gone down for score. And Jeff Sims just hasn't improved from um, last year. And Jordan Yates has. It's crazy. It's crazy how, I, I don't know. Jeff Sims, you know, says he spent all this time with Pat now. Well, that should have been a that should have been a red flag. Um, Jeff Sims has clearly put in the work. And clearly, it's just a bad coach that is it's squandering Jeff Sims. I think Jeff Sims has more raw talent. But Jordan Yates, um, at this time is looks like the better quarterback a lot of people are calling for uh yates to be the starter from now on and i really don't blame them um so uh jordan yates um one of the clear uh bright spots in this um i wouldn't be mad if i wouldn't be mad if he started and gave sim some time to um you know work on his passing game but i mean it's not like i have faith in our freaking um coordinator or whatever coaching staff to develop them we need to de we need to replace our offensive coordinator he's not any good he's not any good jeff collins you know <laughs> oh yeah another thing we're not going to be able to um afford to fire jeff collins thanks to his um seven year contract that we gave him we basically his buyout we'd basically have to pay him as if he was still coaching there we'd have to pay him the rest of what he's owed so 
I mean, we're stuck with Collins to like next year, like the end of the next year at the soonest. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, I want to give a quick shout out to um, everybody. I, I, I was, you know, hysterical the other night um, because this isn't, this wasn't just a loss in my opinion. It was a program killing loss. You know, there were a lot of upsets this year, uh, season. Uh, some of them were really bad. Uh, I don't think any of them were as bad as, uh, Jackets losing to Northern Illinois. Uh, like, as far as big picture. Like, Montana losing to Washington. Or, Washington losing to Montana. Probably the biggest talent gap, you know, as far as expectations and everything. That doesn't take away Washington's talent. What are they, what is worst case scenario for Washington? Seven and five? I kill for seven and five. I mean, <laughs> Georgia Tech losing to Northern Illinois is the worst upset of the season as far as what it means for the programs. So <sighs> maybe Washington State losing to Utah State. I don't know or care enough about Washington State to talk about that. But um, you know what, you guys, I've been rambling for 16 friggin' minutes. Um, I, I wanted to give a shout out to the people that, I mean, clearly I was hysterical the other night and even some dog fans were feeling bad for me. I mean, I spend all off season absolutely, uh, just terrorizing dog fans, talking trash, telling them how bad they suck. And I got them over here feeling bad for me. That's how pathetic and sad, um, the Georgia Jack Yellow Jackets are. Well... To my dog fans, I hate your team, but I love you guys. Um, well, of course, me, the ones that, <laughs> some of them just come in and laugh at me and think it's funny, but <laughs> God. <laughs> and uh, I just had some people, I, I had a lot of people feel bad for me. And it's like, I mean, I'm just, I was so hysterical and upset at this bad team that I've, you know, invested a lot in. So that's kind of why I did this video. Um, if it didn't cheer you up at all, I'm sorry. If you're a Tech fan, I mean, if you wasted 20 minutes of your life talking about, listen to me talk about it. Um, I could pretty much ramble about this game forever, but um, I'll, I'll let you guys go. I uh, appreciate and anybody stuck around. Appreciate people trying to cheer me up. It's not going to work, but I appreciate it. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time.